The internet is paid for by ads. You probably got an ad before this video. Social media these days is a constant feed of ads. And if you're lucky, if you go to a new site, you can sometimes see a little bit of the news through all the ads. These days, you even get ads if you pay for the service. Ads have become an accepted part of using the internet, but they've only been getting worse. Companies have been getting greedier and have started pushing an insane amount of ads on users. Not only that, but every little personal detail of your life is now being tracked by giant internet conglomerates to serve you better ads. And ads went from simple and non-intrusive to this. And they're loud, they're in your face, they're scammy, they're smutty, and that's when they're not just literal malware. Wow, ads have gotten pretty bad, and users are getting tired of it. More users than ever before are using ad blockers now. But companies have started to go to war against ad block users. Now it's an arms race to see who can block the other one better, the sites with the ads or the ad bloggers. All of this has led to a big debate online. Is blocking ads right or wrong? How is the little guy, and more importantly, the giant mega corporation, supposed to make money if you block ads? But we're getting ahead of ourselves. In order to see the full extent of just how bad online ads are getting, I had to do the unthinkable. I had to turn off my ad blocker. In my research for this video, I tried not blocking ads for a week after years of using an ad blocker. And the internet is really bad without an ad blocker. First off, ads now are extremely invasive. They're no longer just a small static banner ad under a YouTube video like they used to be. Now there's unskippable ads and constant interruptions throughout every video. Now I can't go on a news website without getting buried in ads. And it's not just ads, but I'm now getting obnoxious pop-ups on news websites telling me to sign up. There's pop-up auto-playing videos everywhere. There's cookie banners on every website. How do people use the internet like this? One of the biggest things I noticed is that all of these ad companies do a terrible job of actually screening their ads. How many times have you been advertised blatant scams? How about a get-rich-quick course promising to make you millions while you lay in bed? Or how many times on YouTube have you seen an ad with a picture of Mr. Beast and no way, Mr. Beast is giving away $1,000 to everyone who clicks on this ad. Wow, thanks Mr. Beast. Wait, because it can get worse. Simple scams aren't bad enough. How about malware? Google has had multiple cases of Google search results advertising fake, malicious versions of software that you search for. And they're put above the actual search results with very little to show that they're actually ads unless you're really paying attention. And you might think that these are just obvious scams that only your grandma would fall for. But these scam ads are getting pretty sophisticated. Here's one example for an ad for the image editor GIMP that takes you to a fake version of the website where you end up downloading malware. Can you tell the difference between the real GIMP website and this fake GIMP website? The domain only slightly differs and uses the exact same homepage. And yes, even if you're too smart to fall for these scamming ads, millions of internet users aren't as savvy. Some ads you don't even need to click on. They'll just start executing malware as soon as they load. Very efficient. And yes, ads that give you malware have been around for ages, but they're still alive and well. A couple of years back, even the FBI, of all people, wrote a press release recommending people to use an ad block for their safety. That's how bad it's getting. Ad blocking software doesn't just block malicious ads, but even malicious websites. If you want to download the password manager KeePass, you might think to type in keypass.com. Okay, seems like a legit place to download it. But if I turn on uBlock Origin, it lets me know that I'm at the wrong website, and has probably just saved me from bricking my computer or downloading a crypto miner. Thanks, uBlock Origin. And if that's not bad enough, ads and tracking scripts just end up slowing down the internet for everyone. If you use the Brave browser, it has this nice feature that I like that shows you just how much bandwidth and time you save by blocking ads and trackers. And you might not think that's a big deal if you have blazing fast internet. But for millions of internet users that are in developing countries or using rural internet that's not as fast, some websites can literally become unusable with how bloated these ads and trackers make them. So online ads are bad. We've established that. But the ads you see are just part of the problem. Because it's no longer enough to show you ads that you might be interested in. Now ad companies need to know everything about you to give you more targeted ads. And companies make billions of dollars trying to give you the most personal ads. Users give away a lot of personal information to websites all the time. People search for some personal things on Google. And these companies realize that the more they can collect about users, the more money advertisers would pay to get their ads in front of the right eyeballs. So ad companies now know you better than you know yourself. And they use trackers around the internet to collect as much as possible about you. Sure, sites like Facebook are tracking you while you're on it. Everybody knows that. But Google knows every website you visit because you use their web browser. You view their ads on every website, and you're secretly tracked by Google Analytics, which is on just about every website out there. But that's not even half of it. 
Not just your browsing history, but everything in your life is being mined for personal data. Thanks to online advertising, now even your bank is using your transaction history to target ads to you. Is nothing sacred? Oh, and that new smart TV you bought? It's also handing over all your personal information to advertisers. All to make more money, baby. It's a very creepy idea that you have to give up any sense of privacy in order to use the web. But that's the implicit contract you agree with when you use the modern web. Ublock Origin, one of the most popular ad blocking tools, doesn't even call itself an ad blocker. It calls itself a content blocker. That's because the most nefarious things on the web aren't just ads anymore. It's the underlying scripts that track you, fingerprint you, and use all kinds of advanced techniques to follow you around the internet, all for the purpose of giving you more advertisements. If you don't want companies to collect all your personal information, you're not a bad person. The argument would be different if we were simply talking about non-intrusive print ads like in the pre-internet days. But ad technology has become much more invasive and insidious, and blocking ads and trackers is one of the only ways to opt out. And all the issues with ads these days, it's not going to get any better. Companies are going to keep squeezing out as much money from their users as possible. The problem is that these big platforms like YouTube and Facebook can't grow anymore. They've already gotten basically the entire world's population using them. The market is saturated, and if they can't grow their business by getting new users, they need to start getting more money out of each user if they want to continue to grow. With big businesses like this, it's not enough that they're profitable. They're accountable to shareholders who demand that the business keep growing year over year. And YouTube adding more ads, cracking down on ad blockers, that's what that looks like. They need each user to start making more money for them. Same thing with Amazon Prime now adding ads to their video streaming service. That's right, you're already paying $15 a month for Amazon Prime, but now you also get ads with that. And if you want to remove them now, well, you have to pay an additional $3 a month extortion fee to get rid of them. Like everyone else, they're upping the ads to extract even more money from you. So what's the end game of the ad-based internet? They can't just keep adding ads forever. Once the user experience gets bad enough, eventually people are going to stop using the website. Over the past few years, you'll notice that less and less sites are just using ads for revenue. YouTube now offers YouTube Premium for an ad-free experience with additional features like being able to download videos or background playing on mobile. Big news websites like Bloomberg are now paywalling a lot of their content. Of course, if you do pay for it, you still get ads. More YouTubers aren't making even the majority of their money from ads. They're also paywalling video and content behind services like Patreon or relying on donations or merch. The ad-based model of the internet where everything is free and you pay for it with your data and attention is not the only business model. It's just the one that we've gotten used to. Because there's also the fact that the ad-based economy has made the internet a much worse place. Google search results are practically useless these days because every website you open relies on ads and clicks. They have no incentive to actually make the content good because as long as they can get you to view an ad, they've won. That's why nobody respects journalists anymore. Gone is the impartial calm reporting replaced with clickbait and ragebait. And you get poor quality articles where the only goal is to get you in front of ads, no matter what. Ads drive websites like Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter to make you as addicted as possible. Because the longer you spend, the more ads you view. They're not trying to make the service better, just to increase engagement and keep you on the app longer. And if that involves ruining your mental health to make more money, then so be it. But people are getting tired of feeling like they're being used by the app instead of the other way around. There's a whole other angle that excessive advertisements is coming at the cost of the world's mental health. How are you supposed to be content while getting constant reminders about how your life is not good enough until you have their specific product or service? It's pretty intuitive that the more ads you view, the less satisfied you're going to feel with your life. But for all you guys out there who want a source, a study that took place over decades and across 27 countries showed that the more advertising people are exposed to, the less satisfied they'll feel. Big shock. The world is being ruined by overconsumption fast enough as is. We certainly don't need more consumerism and malcontents. So it really shouldn't come as a surprise with how bad the internet has become with ads that more and more people are using ad blockers. Now you certainly aren't a bad person for using ad block no matter how many pop-ups you get about how bad you are and people are getting tired of having their privacy invaded and their personal data sold to advertisers to get them to buy more junk. People are tired of offensive, invasive, and malicious ads that are not screened by ad companies like Google. People are tired of having companies try to extract every last cent's worth of value out of them. They're tired of services getting worse while at the same time getting more and more ads. Users that use adblock are not just being greedy and wanting something for nothing. They're against everything that the modern advertising industry stands for. 
The advertising model is not the only way to make money online, and I think the more we get away from it, the better off society will be. There are plenty of people that want good content on the internet and are more than willing to pay for it. You can support your favorite creators by donating. People are willing to pay bloggers on Substack. They're willing to pay for apps and monthly subscriptions if they really get value out of the service. So the internet can survive without ads. The biggest losers will be those who create content and blog spam that isn't good enough for anyone to want to support it financially. And is that any great loss? Now, ads are not going anywhere anytime soon, but I think that you'll continue to see more of a pushback and creators and companies finding other ways to monetize besides ads. And honestly, good riddance.